Hello guys, welcome back. By looking at the title, you've probably be like, this gal is crazy because obviously Python is the highest in-demand programming language among software developers and data scientists. And yes, I totally am on board. I know Python is user-friendly because of its simple syntax, and it's also extremely flexible and versatile. It can be used for web development. It can also be used for data analysis and machine learning. Plus, Python has an inclusive developer community globally to provide support and help. These are the advantages that are boosting Python's popularity right now. And with that being said, I think some points of Python will break its popularity in the future. Now, hear me out. The first drawback of Python that makes it unlikely to be the language of the future is that Python is not strong in mobile development. And this is kind of a deal breaker because nowadays we are seeing the shift from desktop to smartphone. So clearly we need robust languages to build mobile apps or mobile software. And unfortunately, Python isn't one of those robust languages. So Android or iOS apps are pretty much out of the question with Python. Yes, I know that there are some libraries that have improved the performance of Python in the mobile app development world. For example, libraries Kiwi and Beware allow you to create mobile applications to run on different systems. But Python wasn't really made with mobile in mind to begin with. Other languages like Java, Kotlin, or Swift are crushing it in mobile app development. So if you're thinking about writing cool mobile apps, it doesn't really make sense to do it with Python. In other words, unless there are big breakthroughs in Python's mobile development capability, it won't take the crown of the top programming language forever. Another weakness of Python that makes it unlikely to be the programming language in the future is Python is simple. I know being simple is one of the biggest advantages of Python, but it could also be the biggest curse. So part of the reason why Python is beginner friendly is that you don't even need to clear the variable type or data type when you assign variables. This feature is referred to as dynamically typed and Python is so-called a dynamically typed language. And this means that a lot of memory needs to be used because Python has to reserve enough space for each variable that it works with in any case. So for any memory intensive tasks, Python wouldn't be a good choice. And on top of that, lots of memory usage also translates to lots of computing time because every time the variable is referenced or the variable is written, Python will check its data type and also allocate memory accordingly, which makes Python slow. Sometimes it can be really slow. Another reason for the speed limitations is that Python is a high level interpreted language, which means that execution takes place with an interpreter instead of a compiler like in C or C++. Basically, Python code gets executed line by line, which causes it to slow down. So again, if speed is a focal point for your project, which is probably the case 90% of the time, Python wouldn't be a good choice for that task. The next major drawback that may break Python's popularity is the runtime errors. Now we know that a Python script doesn't get compiled first before it gets executed. So instead, it compiles every single time you execute it. So any coding error manifests itself at runtime. For example, like I just said, Python is dynamically typed, which means that a data type isn't static. It can change at any time. So honestly, runtime errors are really hard to avoid. And this really leads to poor performance, unfortunately. And for more complex programs, it could be extremely difficult to debug. So as a developer, you will have to dedicate lots of time to run rigorous testing in order to get the desired outcome. Now, the very last effect that sets a timestamp on Python is that it's flexible, but not flexible enough. I will take the Lambda as an example. So the Lambda expression exists in pretty much all programming languages, like in C, Java, Ruby, 
Python, R, you name it. So we can think of a lambda as a small throwaway or unnamed function you pass to something else immediately upon creation. It's used to define a function within another function. So it's quite a useful feature for functional programming. So as much flexibility as Python could offer, you would think that lambdas should be as well flexible, right? But the reality is the usage of lambdas is rather restrictive. So for example, you can't specify any statements in a lambda, otherwise you will get a syntax error. And also lambdas in Python doesn't allow multiple expressions, otherwise again, syntax error. But with any other languages, the lambda expression is way more flexible. Like in JavaScript, you are allowed to define multi-line error functions. And even in R, which is another super high-level programming language, you can add multiple expressions by using a curvy bracket. Honestly, it surprised me when I first learned about the restrictions of Python Lambda expressions. Now you may be like, well, this is really a minor issue. Do you really claim that Python isn't the language of the future because of how Lambda works in Python? Well, I do think this reflects some design flaws of Python, and I do think that Python will probably remain stunted for its insufficient Lambda syntax, at least partially. Now, with all these Python drawbacks in mind, I'd like to briefly touch on other two fast-growing languages that may overtake Python as a top programming language. For developers, Go or Golang is on the rise. It's a statically typed high-level programming language created at Google. As a new language, Go is only 10 years old, but it's growing rapidly. Go is one of the most loved languages by developers who use it. Go's own 2020 developer survey seems to agree, with a 92% satisfaction rating by Go users. Although being such a young language, Go already has lots of excellent features. For example, Go has a compiler that detects coding errors you make, so it's better than Python in terms of debugging a big program. Plus, Go was born for parallel computing, which again is a weak point of Python. So all of these features are boosting the potential of Go to replace Python in the future. Now, for my fellow data scientists, I would keep an eye on Julia, which again is a fairly young language with great potential. So Julia specifically targets domains like data mining, machine learning, and scientific computing, etc. So it runs faster than Python, and it has a much simpler syntax than Python. All in all, as the size of data continues to increase, speed and parallel computing are the name of the game right now. Unfortunately, Python will no longer solve these problems. And now, do you think Python will continue to gain traction in the future, or do you think it will gradually lose its crown in the next decade or two? Comment down below and share what you think. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. So see you pretty soon in my next video. Bye guys.